Hello everybody and welcome. I was so thrilled today that I learned about a new technique for some invaluable software. Now I've been buying old laptops, computers, and tablets that had Windows 7 on it because it seemed like that was the only thing that this software would really run on. And I'm talking about the the super duper the free interlinear scriptures analyzer this stuff is amazing and I know once these uh, young people get a handle on it and start kind of seeing how well just how twisted you know their Bible is when you take a look at the original and start comparing it uh, eyes are going to come open and people are going to start waking up like never before and you know when you start thinking about a revival uh, when this happens it's gonna be revival of the utmost spectacular kind so anyway uh, I want to show you how this works it's so cool I just can't believe it now this is only up for seven days because it's temporary I'm still trying to figure out how to do this on a more permanent basis but it's really cool because basically what you do is you go in here and you uh, you basically operate this uh, program which is on a, a cloud server and uh, you do it through your internet browser so you don't install it on your phone you don't install it on your laptop your computer or tablet or anything you click a link and it just runs through your your internet browser so it's just super cool so here I am I'm on my Facebook page and this first link kind of shows you how to use it or how to play it and the second link is the download link. Now, if you download it, you have to um, go through the proper interface to be able to use it. So basically, you would have to go through the same interface that they have at uh, Cameo. C-A-M-E-Y-O is the name of uh, the people who do this. And uh, we'll get a quick glimpse of it. But let me go ahead and boot this up because it takes a little while. And here we go. You can see that we're at uh, jupiter.cameo.com and it's uh, loading up the program right now in, uh, I guess you'd call it memory or RAM because it doesn't go into your computer. And there it is. Man, that's fast. That's, that's so quick. It blows my mind. Okay, so basically what I do here is I'm going to go ahead and take it where we can kind of see what's going in here and take it up to full screen. Okay. Okay, and here we are. All right. So, I'm going to get into a quick lesson on uh, some of the little in the. There's errors when you use it on your phone. Nothing big. Nothing that makes it uh, uh, unable to do all the really amazing things that it does. But uh, just a couple extra steps you have to go through to get it to function correctly. So. I'm going to go to one of my most favorite scriptures. I'm going to go over here to Zephaniah, verse 3, or chapter 3, and verse 9. And boom, there it is. Okay, this is so cool because you basically got three different, uh, what you might call pages or areas to view. But actually, there's another one down there. So what you have here is you got your chord coordinates view, your concordance view, your search results, your interlinear, and your translation over here on the far right. Now up here in the interlinear, there's a translation at the top of this window, and there's also a word for word translation below the Hebrew. Now the Hebrew isn't necessarily the Father's word, and there's like five different versions that I know of today, you know, counting uh, the Paleo, the Babylonian, the Aramaic, and uh, there's probably many more that I don't even know about. But the fact of the matter is, is the Father said, don't change or add to his word. And uh, based on what I've been able to find in this text right here, it lines up um, perfectly, as best I can tell so far, have found no deviations from actually the stone edition of the Tanakh. So, so far I think it's the best available version that we have today 
of the purest form of the Father's Word. So basically, some of the really amazing things about this is we can actually go in here and do a word search. So instead of using Strong's or any other kind of concordance, you know, which you can go up here and toggle some of these settings and uh, be able to use that if that's what you're wanting. But uh, basically, we've always been taught the best way to get understanding is to let Scripture define Scripture. Now, I'm going to show you something here. Uh, I probably should go with something pretty simple, like uh, this very last word, which... Uh, is commonly pronounced as Ahad and a lot of people say it uh, has to do with the letter one it has to do with unity and things like that so when I do a left click on this and then this menu pops up and I usually go up here to the one just above it that has no vowel pointings or anything like that that uh, the Jews have added to it during the Persian exile because the father didn't put that on there in the original so we're going to go back to the old path the old ways and see if we might be able to get and step around some of those stumbling blocks and confusion that uh, have basically corrupted and infiltrated the father's pure word so once you get there and then you click on this top one again and it goes away oh man i didn't do anything right oh now it come up. Okay, so basically it did a, a search. And it kind of shows you the, the Strong's number and uh, the transliteration and uh, the definition and things like that. So if I drag this up, if I can, get a hold of it here. I'm going to try to grab this. You can see because my internet is a little bit low that things are kind of lagging and uh, to be honest with you I don't even use that that concordance because a concordance is basically another man's opinion of what the father's word says and I just assume go back and look at the father's word and see what it says so I made a little mistake when I did that last one so I'm going to go back over here to click on the OT for Old Testament oh man I hope this thing don't start acting up on me I was so thrilled that it might work I kinda act like it just froze And I'm not really sure what's going on here, but I'm going to try to reload it and see what happens here. Bear with me, folks. I don't know. I might not even be able to post this video if this don't pan out. I, I sure was thrilled, though. Oh, my goodness. Let's try this. I'm going to close that and go right back to my link and pop up a new window and everything. Okay, I'm starting off right. Here we go. Okay, so basically it looks like everything's okay. Let me pop this up to full screen so I can get a handle on this search down here. Pull that up. <coughs> okay, <coughs> I'm going to try it again. Go over here to the Old Testament and Zephaniah 3 and 9. And there we are. Okay, so we're going to look up Achad. Point that. I mouse over and I do a right click and then I go down and left click on search. Okay. And then I click over here because there it is. There's our word. The Aleph, the Chet, and the Dalit. 
And what's really cool is you can go up here in the top. I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but right here where it says search. And when you click on that search, I hope I don't mess up something here. You can search either translation and use a translated term like uh, L-O-R-D or what have you. And then you can actually go to the interlinear right here and click on that. And we still have our word down here, so we didn't lose it. Lose it. But if you don't have a word down here, you clear it out, and then right up above here, you can kind of see this. Um, I guess you'd call it a keyboard that's right inside the program. And they're all not there, but there's a double arrow up here where you click on that, and you get more of them. And they're down here then. Okay, so this is really the key behind all of this. We're going to use scripture by the same author, maybe even around the same time, to define scripture. And we're primarily looking at uh, what the Jews would call the Tanakh. And uh, since it's uh, one of the minor prophets, you know, it might be considered in the, in the writing or the, the Ketuvim. And I'm not really sure if he's in the Nevi'im, which is the prophets or not. But let's click search and see what happens here. Okay, I click search. Now this is really, really cool because basically what it does is it pops up every usage. In, in this case, it would be OT or Old Testament of that specific Hebrew word or the Father's word. You know, it's commonly referred to as the Hebrew language, but the Father never called it that. So we go down here, and the very first usage is in uh, Genesis 1-5. Okay, and if you take a look up here, we're in Genesis 1-5. And there it is right there. You can scroll over here, you know, on that. Go up and down. You can actually even pick a different verse here. And when you click it, it pops up over here on the other, the interlinear window. And you can go down here and click on these different um, listings of our search and what were found and you can actually jump from one to the next just that quickly and you can scroll down here and you can find out you know what's on the other end and uh, that's just how simple it is all right so I'm not looking at any Strong's. I'm not looking at any concordance or anything like that. I'm looking at other instances in Scripture where that same word was used. And once you kind of start to uh, understand or to recognize these letters that are up here in what's commonly referred to as a Hebrew, uh, you'll be able to actually start to be able to read and pronounce those without using the uh, I guess you'd call it a transliteration which is written right below it so the transliteration actually is English characters which are used to help you to try to pronounce the Hebrew word right above it so I'm gonna try to zoom in here if we can uh, it didn't work uh, let me see if I can do something over here. Zoom in. That's a little bit better. It's bigger. Okay, so we're going to go back over to uh, one of these that has the... the Achad in it. And there it is. So now you can see this a little clearer hopefully and I'm telling you if you've got a, a, a tiny little phone and you can't see very good this is going to be difficult but you can zoom in you can kind of scroll around and it works that way too so up here in this green highlight is Achad again the Aleph the Chet and the Dalit now this reads from right to left like the old language always did and uh, it really reads actually correctly but uh Western um, population basically reads from, that we grew up in, reads from left to right. So when you take a look at this, it tells you how to say that word up there. So you see the A-C-H-D. A-C-H-D. And the common 
translation is one. So that's just huge. And I kind of wonder, you know, like how many different places it might actually say one. So we can kind of look through here and say that one's one, that one's one, and that one's one, that one's one. But I bet you, if we go down here to hope I don't mess this up. Right here, and even our, our verse that we started out with in uh, Zephaniah 3 and verse 9, we see Achad. Okay, so the rendering basically is uh, Shechem. Shechem is, uh, just so happens to be that burdensome city in the promised land that uh, kept backsliding. So basically Shechem, you know, they got that as shoulder blade, which is probably a more accurate rendering would be that place of burden, like Shechem, that burdensome city. And uh, a man would typically carry his burden on his shoulder, a donkey would carry it on his back, but it has to do with a common burden, okay? Not necessarily one, but united, okay? Shoulder blade one. So if you carry everything, you know, in in one place, you're basically united in your understanding and you're sharing the same burden, you're sharing the same load, you're sharing the same convictions, etc. So that's what this is all about. But I'm just kind of touching on this briefly. I'm going to come out with a lot more of this because I really want people to get a hold of this because I have been at this for a very long time. I'll be 62 years old this year. And I have been looking and looking and looking and trying to find a way to uh, either get the app, a really powerful app. And I've looked at a bunch of them and I haven't seen any of them that compare to this. And uh, basically to get it out there to the people, especially these young people, which are, are so smart and they're so good with, uh, you know, their computers and uh, their cell phones and things like that that I think they could probably get in here and do a lot better than I ever could So basically, I'm just putting it out there. It's available uh, Get it put it on your phone, you know, it's not a download what it is you have to put it in your uh, in your bookmarks and uh, bookmark it there and I'll try to update it just as soon as I can so that you're able to um, keep up with the link and keep up with the study and share what you find now I have to show and remind you just real quick because going like this clicking on that and then clicking on this and getting that search window won't happen on your telephone and I'm not really sure why that is but for some reason in Android it doesn't work so Basically, I'm going to click out of it. So what you have to do is you have to go up and you click on search up here. And you have to see how you write that. But you go into interlinear and then it pops up. Okay. And then once it pops up, then you have to type it in here. So you would go over here and you hit on the, let me find it, the Aleph. There it is. The Aleph the hit and a lot of these kind of look similar and I think it's this one I can't be sure that's the towel if you mouse over it for a while it'll tell you which one it is there it is that's the hit so we'll put the the hit in there and then uh, find the towel and I believe it's going to be over here under these. And uh, I don't see it. Um, it's even hard for me to see, and even when it's this big, but uh, I'm still not seeing it. That is really strange. Hmm. 
the tau, which should be kind of like an X. Uh, well, that would be in the Paleo Hebrew, but uh, or the letter T. That's the tet. That's the wa. There it is. And then the tau. Now, I put it in there too many times, but uh, I even spelt it wrong because it wasn't the tau, it was a dalit. But you kind of see how it works, and you can use backspace and delete in there, but remember when you're doing in the Hebrew font, it's from right to left, so backspace and delete are backwards. And that takes a little bit getting used to. Now, something else I want to point out real quick is uh, you'll notice on here that, uh, like, Achad, uh, well, not so much there. Let me find one that's got an H in it, uh, like the Father's name, okay? And they, they translate it as the Y-A-W-E-H. Now, I have some pretty convincing evidence to, or undeniable evidence, actually, that the proper pronunciation is Yahuwah. So when you see the e, e like the the yod and the he, there's like an i and an e. Now in this program, you'll find out that certain um, Hebrew letters have, uh, in this case, the e goes a uh, he. It sounds like he, so you got to get used to that. It's e ya, and then the the, the u makes a u sound e ya u a. Uh. So Yahuwah is the father's name now this is really good because i want to let you know that this is the first three steps that the father has for all of his people when he comes back and if this is the direction that he wants to go when he comes back then all those people who aren't lazy should think about maybe getting these first three steps taken care of or at least trying to approach them and do what you can so basically i'm going to read the translation for you for uh then i will turn to the people's his pure language, it doesn't say to the people's a lip being pure, the brura shafa, so commonly translated as clean lip and pure language, and to call all of them on his bashim, Yahuwah. So call on all his name, they all know his name, and his name is Yahuwah, Le'abodu, um, and to serve him with Shechem Achad with the same burden you share his burdens you consider his convictions and you basically abide in his will so i'm going to wrap this up i don't want it to go too long i think it went pretty long already so i'm going to uh, let you know that just comment ask questions share and uh, just let people know that this is just an invaluable tool to learn the truth about the father's word from the best resource that we have available today Bless you all. Thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon. Bye now. Well, I've got to get off of here and find my program and stuff. Bear with me. I'll get it taken care of.